Hey guys, my name is Derlin. I am showing you how to do an object pool using Bolt. Um, I have here a main camera, directional light, a plane, an empty game object called the cube spawner, and the scene variables I am not using at the moment. Now, on the cube spawner, I have two flow machines. I have the cube spawner flow machine, and I have an object pooler flow machine. And I'll show you what this does. Play. It initializes five prefab cubes uh, and sets them to inactive. Now, when I right click in the scene, it will spawn one in, give it a random direction and impulse. So it will take the pool object out of the pool, set it active, give it an impulse and a direction. And then after a few seconds, it removes it and puts it back into the inactive list. And the list will grow as needed. And as they remove, I can add, you know, respawn, pull them back out of the pool. The list grows. And there we go. Using Bolt, and we have a nice object pool. Actually, we have two. So let me show you how this all works. In the cube spawner here, we have an initialized pool at start. We have the grow pool as needed, and can the pool grow? Now, I have quite a few variables over here, all set to object variables. I will go over them with you. So, I have two array lists the inactive pooled objects and the active pooled objects. I have my pool size. I have the pool prefab, which is whatever prefab you want to use. I have my weight between objects, random direction. I have a speed, how fast they're moving, can the grow. The cube lifetime is active, starting pool size, total pool objects, and then I have a current inactive pool object and a current active pool object, and an active pool contains object, and that one's a boolean which you can't see because it's underneath my Base. So when we look at the flows, we initialize the pool on start. So on the starting event, we get the inactive pooled objects list. We set the capacity to the starting pool size, which is five. And then we for loop and iterate and instantiate all of these game objects and add them to the inactive pooled objects list over here. So we're getting the variable pool prefab. We're getting the transform of the cube spawner, we're getting the quaternion of the cube spawner, and then we're getting the parent, which is the cube spawner itself. We are going to instantiate the game objects. We're going to set them all as inactive. We will then add them to the list of inactive pooled objects, and we will set the can grow variable to false. Okay, so the next section is can the pool grow? So what we do is we take the active pooled objects and we're getting the count. If the count is greater than zero and if the inactive pooled objects count is less than or equal to zero, if both of those are true, we go up to this branch. Now, when we're, they're true, we said it can grow and that allows the pool to grow. But if it is not true, if there's objects in the inactive pooled objects, or if there's objects in the active pooled objects, more than one, or le less if there's no objects in the active pooled objects, then we set it to false. Anyway, so can grow becomes false. Once can grow becomes true, we, same as before, we're instantiating pool prefab with the same transform, quaternion itself setting it as inactive, adding it to the list of inactive pooled objects. Now, we go to the cube spawner graph. Okay, first we will be checking and setting the variables. This is an update. We are first going to check and see if there's any objects in our inactive object list. 
if there are any objects in our in object of object list, that lets us go to the next section. So pulling the same inactive pulled objects, <clears throat> we're looking to grab the first item and we will be setting it to the current inactive pulled object. And we're pulling that out of the same list. Uh, could be the same here, but then you end up with spaghetti wires. And so that's why these are duplicate, just for cleanliness. Now, once we have our current inactive pooled object, we will spawn it in from the pool. So on mouse input, event, right mouse button down, inactive pooled objects, get variable, we're counting the items. If it's greater than zero, then we can do something with it. Now, in here, if you do happen to click fast enough, um, it will tell you there's no more objects to spawn until this clicks true and adds a new one in. But this isn't really necessary. I was that's just for testing. So if there are no objects in the inactive object list, set the variable can grow to true, and then that allows the can grow. All right. If it is true, if there are objects, then we will remove the lit object, the current inactive pulled object. We're going to remove that from the inactive pulled objects list. We will add that same op item to the active pulled objects. Now we're taking the last item out of the active pulled objects list, setting it active, and then we're going to do something with it. So taking a rigid body, we're getting the self transform position, and we're going to add force to it. And what we're doing is I just have a random direction. So random direction multiplying it by a random range, random range here for x and z, and then a speed variable for the impulse up. Once the object has spawned in, we need wait for a few seconds and then return it to the pool. So here's our wait, here's our cube lifetime, which we can set in the inspector. Once that time has passed, this will fire. Now, what happens is, First, we need to evaluate, are there active pooled objects? If the count is greater than zero, this will be true. That allows us to move on to get the active pooled objects. We're getting the first item or item at index zero, and we are going to set it to inactive. And still, if there are items here, that allows this to be true. That allows us to take this object, first item at index zero, we're going to add it to the current active pooled object variable. Once we have it in our current active pooled object variable, we will set the position back to the original. So we are going to take the active pooled objects, we are removing this item out of it, we're removing the index zero here and we will get the transform position of the cube spotter, reset it on our current active pulled object. So we're setting that back to zero, zero, zero. After it has you know, had its random direction, we need to reset that to zero. And then we will be adding that item. <clears throat> we will be adding that back to the inactive pulled objects list. And we will be getting, we'll be using the current active pulled object to add to the inactive pulled objects list. And that's really all there is to it. That is um, our object pools. And again, I can show you what it's doing here. So you can see it's checking and setting the variables. True. Here we have a cube prefab contains an item. The inactive pulled objects has items, and we have a current inactive pulled object. Now our inactive pulled objects array over here has five objects because that's the starting setting. Pool size five. <clears throat> now when I click in here, it spawns it in moves it to the active pulled object list. And then after a few seconds, it gets pushed back. 
and you can watch our current inactive and our current active change over here. You prefab file. And that's all there is to it. As you click, the list will grow as needed. And then when the items are done, they get put back into the inactive object list. Well, that's it, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.